Everybody needs power over ethernet. How else are you gonna power your Raspberry Pis? But what is it? And have you ever thought about how it's awesome? I can plug in a device to this ethernet switch and it will also get power from this ethernet switch. That's pretty awesome. Data and power in the same place. Eight two and a half gig ports, four 10 gig ports. Just by virtue of plugging my PoE Raspberry Pi in to one of these ports, it gets power and of course networking. It really simplifies installation and wiring clutter anywhere you're gonna run this. It's a great way to put your network devices wherever they need without worrying about power requirements, wherever you can get one networking cable. And a lot of the time for networking cables, there's not really codes or local compliance issues that you have to deal with. Power over Ethernet really got its start in the corporate phone system. How cool is it to have a digital LCD voice over IP phone with Android? Man, I had really high hopes for this, but uh, yeah, you shouldn't you shouldn't buy this. Maybe something else will come along, come along later. But yeah, look, just one cable and it's powering the phone. How cool is that? It's the idea that's awesome, but the implementation, this particular implementation sucked. But this switch, I'm really happy with. And the standard quickly found its way to powering all sorts of other devices like wireless access points and security cameras and any kind of IoT devices that you might find inside a corporate business. I mean, we've got a motorized PTZ security camera. It can look around, it can zoom in. Yeah, so all of these are basically the same deal. And so just one cable powers this wireless access point and it's, it's basically good to go. I'm gonna unplug that so it's a little easier to hear. And so because all of these devices just have to have a network connection, it makes it a lot more convenient. All I have to do is run one, you know, cat six wire, wherever I need these devices. I don't have to worry about power. The switch is gonna power it. And I can just put the devices wherever I need to without having to worry about the power aspect of it and having, you know, a million power bricks and then somebody kicked something and something came unplugged and it's like, oh, it's got network, but it doesn't have power. No, it's just one cable. Another really cool aspect of this is that all of this can run off of a battery backup or battery power as long as this switch remains powered. So if I have a wiring closet or, you know, wherever my servers and stuff are, if I'm running this ethernet switch off of a battery backup, all of the other devices that are connected to the switch will also stay up in the event of a power outage. <laughs> There's a lot of people in California that are experiencing power outages pretty much continuously for the last 10 years. You put a battery backup on it, your Zoom call or whatever is not gonna drop as long as your internet connection also has a battery backup and all of your wireless access points have a battery backup because the power over ethernet switch is also powered. No matter where your access point is, you know, your access points can be on two opposite ends of the house and it'll still work. So let's talk about the power over ethernet standard. In the beginning, power over ethernet was about 15 watts and not really a standard at all, meaning that each port that was connected, the device could use up to 15 watts. And 15 watts for a telephone, that's kind of a lot. Take for example, this 3Com switch. It can supply 15 watts per port. It's a 10100 with a gigabit uplink. Yeah, it's pretty old. It's designed for phones, but it's not perfectly 100% standard. Now this Cisco access point expects a Cisco power injector, which is pretty close to 802.3 AF, but Cisco always likes to add a little bit of their own special sauce. This, this thing can draw a little bit more power than you expect, so it can lead to stability issues if you try to mix and match power delivery. Mostly, those issues are gone now. This ingenious switch is a PoE++ switch, and PoE++ actually has two substandards, type three and four, which is 60 and 90 watts of power delivery. So we've also got PoE Plus, which is 30 watts power delivery. So we went 15, 30, 60, 90, 100. And a lot of the time, the 90 to 100, that's type four. It's a, it really is 100 watt power delivery, but 30, 60, 90, 15, 30, 60, 90 is easy to remember because it's sort of a doubling every time. And PoE++ Type 4 is still a little bit on the bleeding edge. It's like, what sort of crazy mad scientist device do you need that's gonna pull 100 watts from a tiny Cat6 cable? And mostly they're, they're things like PTZ cameras. This one is only 22 watts, the real link, but there are some really, really fancy ones that will use a lot of power. So 
If you're gonna pick up some used PoE stuff on eBay, be sure to look for PoE Plus. That standard is over 10 years old, and you can pick up PoE Plus equipment on eBay pretty cheap. This Ethernet switch from Ingenious, I paid about $700 for, and it's really the best of the best for the installation that I'm going for. It's PoE Plus Plus with a total power budget of 240 watts for all eight of these ports. It combines eight two and a half gig ports and 10, uh, four 10 gig ports that are SFP Plus. So the PoE ports also have power control capabilities and power monitoring, hard reset, that sort of thing. Now contrast that with this. This is the Ubiquiti. This is 250 watts for 24 ports. Yeah. Now $700 for only 12 ports, only eight of which can do power over ethernet. That sounds a little pricey, but between my thirsty access points and security cameras and Raspberry Pi mad science projects like this, the high bandwidth and high power, it's good for my application. You'll have to wait a little bit for the future because I'm gonna do a video on that and it's gonna be a different video, so that'll be pretty good. Now for your PoE needs, you don't have to do it in an all-in-one unit like this. I just like this because I can just run the wires and I'm basically good to go. You can get PoE injectors. So that's what this is called. This is a really old one. It's an IntelliNet, but it's 802.3AF. So this is the 15 watt standard. This is PoE, no plus, no plus plus. And this one is actually standards compliant. It says eight port power over ethernet mid span power supply. And so you have data in and data plus power out. And that's all this thing does. You can also get single port power over ethernet injectors where it's literally just two ports and a little box. It's, it's, not, it's not really very big as anything and you just use that. Most of the time, those single port injectors, especially the relatively recent ones, will pass through two and a half gig just fine. So if you just got a new, you know, two and a half gig ethernet switch and you need to do power over ethernet, you don't have to get a power over ethernet two and a half gig switch like I did. You just use a regular two and a half gig switch plus the power injector. It's just more wiring and it's a little bit messy, but it works really well. It's super easy to find PoE plus power injectors like that. It's a little trickier to find PoE plus plus power injectors, especially if you need type four. That's not really a thing yet. But I mean, probably by the time you're watching this video, you can find them. They're just not, you know, as common as everything else. So these standards, 802.3 AF, that's the first sort of real standard, 802.3 AT and 802.3 BT. 802.3 AT is 30 watts, BT is 60 and 90 watts, depending on if it's type three or type four. Really, when I say 90 watts, I mean 100 watts. It just depends on where you're measuring. Even this Rio Link camera, which this is rated for 22 watts, but in my experience, it's gonna draw a little bit more than that worst case scenario. You've got two motors and you've got these big IR LEDs, like 25 watts is actually more sort of real world with this thing. Cheap cabling and, you know, sort of a bad punch down or bad jacks or, you know, the guy was a little drunk when he was doing your wiring. Those can really make a difference in how much power this thing uses. A couple of watts, uh, and, and that can be problematic. So. In general, if you're doing this for new, in a new installation, I recommend Cat6 or Cat6A because you'll get much less drop and the, the wiring quality is a little higher. Now this thing, with its 10 gig SFP Plus ports, is gonna give me all the bandwidth that I need when I'm running off of the newer you know, wireless standards. The new 802.11 AX wireless access points, you know, those are pushing up to 2.5 gigabits. They typically have four antennas. And so if you pack a lot of people in a room that all have wireless devices that are all doing a lot of stuff, a lot of clients, you got somebody that's doing streaming and Zoom and crap like that, having more antennas and more stuff in your house really helps. Uh, also, a lot of these newer wireless standards aren't really designed to go through, you know, walls. And if you're in an older house or an older building like this one where everything is brick and lath and plaster and wire mesh in the walls to actually hold the plaster. And so in general, I recommend, you know, mounting your access point up high. So basically everybody kind of sort of has line of sight to it. Will it work without line of sight? Yes. Will your speed be reduced or maybe it'll be a little bit more flaky? Yeah, probably. But the idea with these access points is that you're gonna build a mesh and you're gonna have a lot of relatively low power, hopefully inexpensive, not, not inexpensive for right now, but in a few years, and actually have truly good, amazing mesh wireless. And that's another video that I'm working on for the future uh, that should be out pretty quickly that's gonna use some of this equipment. Well, mostly the, the ingenious stuff. I had a choice of ubiquity or ingenious and I opted to go ingenious and I asked them a bunch of questions and so, uh, they are going to send some stuff. I bought this, but Ingenious is also sending some stuff. So that's going to be a lot of fun. But I really do think that 
uh, power over Ethernet is going to take off in a big way for homes, especially smart homes, because it's an actual real standard as opposed to things that, you know, home automation companies invent. And let's also face it, the companies that are doing your home mesh stuff, it's like, oh, this is your home mesh solution. Anything that is, is built and marketed specifically for a residential solution, nine times out of 10, it's basically trash, or at least it's trash for users like us, where we're, we're power users. I mean, all this ingenious stuff is labeled as, you know, business use case. And uh, if I didn't get money off my insurance, I probably wouldn't even care about the cameras, but power over ethernet is the easiest way to deal with that. And hopefully you know a little bit more about standards and a little bit more about what to look for on the used market. And, uh, you're aware of you know just how little power the different devices use because most things really that 15 watts is fine some of these higher end access points they're poe plus so you know they're under 30 watts they're they're like our 22 watt, 30 watt uh real link camera so you know that's that's basically a crash course in what you need to know about poe there is a little bit of a wrinkle like depending on if your wiring uses two pair or four pair uh, hopefully you're not in a situation where you have two pair wiring because that's going to be all types of a nightmare. It can work. Don't recommend it. All right. I'm Wendell. This is level one. I'm signing out and I cannot wait for the next video in this series. See you later.